So Leningrad is um, unoccupied, but of course, uh, we'll see what the Soviets can do about that on their turn. Um, then we had combat down here. There was a unit here in front of Moscow, to the west of Moscow. Uh, that unit was destroyed by these two um, panzer uh, armies here. Uh, down here, there was just a standoff there, no combat. There's a unit here that was destroyed by these three units attacking. And um, uh, this unit here was, was there, moved down to here. Okay. Uh, then further down, these units just moved into position. Uh, there was no combat here. They've got both sides of Odessa covered, but there's no combat. There was no combat there. There were no... Um, Soviet counter blows anywhere on the entire uh, campaign uh, because the Soviet player did not have any cards, which is, of course, a, a significant um, thing, a big, significant position to be in, having no cards. Um, and so the, uh, the, yeah, the, the uh, Germans down south are looking at the possibility, uh, one, one way, of course, one road to victory is to just um, take a lot of towns and uh, try and get the um, the victory point total up to uh, 23 uh, by uh, turn 5. To do that, uh, let's see, they 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They'd have to have to, have to capture five more um, cities. Um, and whether they can do that in... Well, they've got two more turns of movement. So capturing five cities in two turns of movement sounds like a fairly tall order. Other than that, uh, if they could capture Moscow and Leningrad, then uh, that would suffice to uh, win the um, uh, the short uh, campaign here, the Barbarossa five-turn campaign. Um, so uh, we shall see. We're on now to the Soviet uh, turn three. Right, so <clears throat> this is the uh, situation at the end of the uh, Russian uh, third turn. Um, <clears throat> one of the significant things that happened was that the uh, Russians uh, drew a card uh, that enabled them to uh, take two units uh, that were in the shattered, destroyed or surrendered unit boxes, these boxes here, and uh, move them into the rail movement box. Uh, so that was with one card they were able to accomplish. They had one unit here, one there, or several here, sorry. That would have cost them three discards, but they were able to, therefore, to do that with one card, put them into the rail unit box, and then, of course, they came on at the end of the Russian turn. Um, I believe, as a matter of fact, uh, let's see, they would have come on at, uh, I think, what, oh, here we go, yeah, they came on, they came on at uh, Leningrad, which is empty, but of course it does have supply because it's got supply across uh, Lake uh, Ladoga to the western edge, the eastern edge here. So there we go, like that. And then also um, uh, this unit here was able to... I'm not sure they can detrain into an enemy zone of control, come to think of it. So I might have to move that unit. Uh, probably back to here because I want to get it involved in the fighting up there. So I'll I'll check that. Um, in other news, uh, what do we have? Uh, the, the Soviets didn't launch any um, attacks, but there were two counter blows that were uh, employed by the Germans. The one was here, and then the other one was uh, let's see, it was in this region down here, wasn't it? It was against these chaps here. And so they would here with a counter blow and uh, they they got the better of them and caused the Germans to retreat two hexes to here. And in this situation here, um, the counter blow resulted in all these units attacked th that stack there. And the counter blow resulted in giving the Germans the option of a counter attack. Uh, which they decided not to do because they didn't have a significant advantage as far as I could see um, with my limited knowledge of the game. Um, elsewhere, uh, well, reinforcements came on um, and were just basically 
deposited in various cities around and about. Um, so the, oh, that's right, we did a bit of shuffling here as well. These two units basically changed places, which is allowed because this unit was here and um, it, let's see, what did it do? It uh, cost uh, one plus one because it was in Zoc to move to there. So two to move to there and three to move to here. And the unit that was here moved to here, which cost it two and then one there because you can move, um, you can do that in you can move out of zone of control and then back into zone of control as long as you've moved out of out of zone of control in the meantime if you wanted to move from there to there you could only do it if you could successfully land on that hex with um a friend in there uh and it would also stop you right but anyway um so that's the situation that we have has anything particularly extraordinary happened not really uh the the key thing, of course, is that uh, Leningrad was able to have a unit um, uh, arrive so as to uh, take over uh, the defense of Leningrad up there. And let me see, I I've got to look into that unit then. We've got the Northwest uh, Front up there. Was it allowed to detrain into a because the point is is that that hex does have supply there's no problem there it's allowed it must have a supply that's no more than three hexes when it detrains so there's one two three to kalin in here but the question is can it detrain into an enemy zone of control and something tells me that it can't so i'll check that quickly i was right to uh, uh to be suspicious of that no they cannot detrain into an enemy zone of control so uh the uh, Northwest Front, instead of detraining here, has detrained here, which is not in enemy zone of control and is within um, three hex supply of a uh, supplied friendly city here at uh, Kalinin. And uh, that's uh, that's where we are. So now we'll be moving on to... Um, uh, oh, noteworthy again, of course, is that uh, once again, the, um, the Russians have uh, no cards uh, left. Uh, they use several cards to get their units, as we can imagine, out of here. Um, and um, they also, unfortunately, they played... Um, uh, yeah, anyway, right, okay. Um, let's see. So, yeah, we're moving on to turn four now, um, which, of course, is interesting in that. Let's see, we've got some interesting points. So all kinds of things going on. We've got, let's have a look. We've got snow... Uh, we've got the Russians are going to receive three um, uh, shock markers to help them with their attacks. Um, also we've got Pearl Harbor and also the Germans have no blitzes. So and then also the uh, the, the Russians have got uh, two um, pretty competent um, army fronts to uh, to pull in as reinforcements and um so yeah all exciting stuff uh, we'll be back with turn four shortly okay a uh, little change of pace this time uh we're at uh, the german turn four and what i've done is i've done i've got as far as the german movement and then i've um stopped <clears throat> I suppose we're actually in the combat phase, but I haven't rolled any dice yet uh, because I wanted to show in some detail uh, what the uh, German commander has in mind. Keep in mind here that um, the Russian player has no cards, so <clears throat> there are no counter blows and there are no cards being played to interfere with the uh, German plans. And it's becoming apparent that uh, if you have no cards, it's uh, you're in a completely different world than if you do have some cards. But of course, the Russian commander had his reasons for using up cards in uh, previous turns. Anyway, <clears throat> there are some really good opportunities here uh, for the German um, commander to be able to seize um, Leningrad and Moscow this turn, uh, which, as I remember, I think if I remember the... Um, victory conditions that would actually end the um campaign um because if you've got moscow and one other um objective city 
then I believe that uh, wraps it up uh, in this uh, Barbarossa uh, scenario. Um, but in so in the case of Moscow and in the case of uh, Leningrad, uh, there is a one in three on both of them chance of getting um, defender retreat. Uh, <clears throat> so let's see. First thing I wanted to uh, mention was that up here in Leningrad, of course, there are all kinds of benefits if the if the unit in position is a fort. Um, and so, of course, the question could be, why didn't I try to get a fort unit in there? Well, the reason was, uh, again, it's my first time I've played this, so I, I could be short-sighted or making mistakes or whatever. But um, uh, the two that could have gone in there were Leningrad and um, Moscow. But the thing is, is that even when they're in the fort uh, uh, configuration, let's see, Moscow's worth four. And uh, Leningrad in the fort configuration is worth five. That's lovely. But they couldn't move in there and flip over because you do your flips first and then you do your moves. So if they were there right now, they would be worth either two or three. So instead, I sent the central front in there so as to have the maximum number. Now, they're in an objective hex, which is one column shift the wrong way for the Germans. They're in a city hex, and it's also, uh, we have, um, we're, we're in snow now. Um, <clears throat> so those are three, fully three column shifts to the left for the Russians in um, Leningrad and in Moscow. And uh, I think in, in, <laughs> in most places, actually, because uh, here we've got, they're attacking across a river. We've got the same situation there. Three negative column shifts there. And here, they're not attacking across the river because they're not. So there's the attack there, sorry. So I suppose they'll just have two column shifts, one for the forest and one for being Russian defenders in the uh, snow. And here we'll have um, three column shifts because they're both on the wrong side of the river. Okay. But anyway, getting back to Moscow and um, Leningrad. Um <clears throat> If we look at Moscow, for example, we've got 13 against 5, um, which, of course, is 2 to 1. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we look at 2 to 1, because this is important. We look at 2 to 1 and shift it 3. So we go 1, 2, 3, gets us down to here. Not too worried about the counterattacks, because I can't see the Russians counterattacking. So basically, um, let's see, what was I... Uh, May have made a mistake on my calculations here. One second. Now oh, we're okay. So, um, yeah, it's uh, as I said, it's um, two to one with the three column shifts. So we come down here. So two to one becomes dum 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 one to two. So we've got two defender retreats there. We got um, um, two out of six. So that's a one third chance. But the Germans are also in Moscow are going to be playing this. Uh, get the glare out of the way there. This uh, Erich von Manstein um, card, uh, which is uh, during the combat phase, you may double the strength of one supply German unit. Okay, so they're going to double that seven to become a 14. That's going to be 20 then against five, which is going to be four to one. So we look over here then. So that's going to go one, two, three down to here. We're going to be on this one here. Okay. Gives us a chance of an exchange as well. All right. Um, and um, that's, I think, about it. There are no, the Germans have no blitzes this time. The Soviets have three shock counters instead. We can see those over here. There we are, all lined up, ready to come on. Okay. Um, so there may be some powerful Soviet attacks, uh, sort of, in the uh, Soviet turn. Uh, then in other areas, um, basically I sort of brought up all the forces I could to just keep smashing away if possible. Um, here we've got uh, three to one, but they because they've got the the river, they've got three column shifts there against the um, against the Germans, and then here we've got uh, ten against three, so we've got three to one here. And they will get two column shifts because they've managed to get around the end here. Now, of course, what we can also see here is that um, there are gaps, certainly, in the um, German 
uh, line. So there's a gap here. So whether or not some Russian units can go through the gap and start messing around with towns or messing around with isolating um, German units that have gone uh, too far forward, as it were, without without protecting their supply lines, we shall see. Um, and then down here, uh, this is a, a very um, <clears throat> particular case of that, where we've got this big gap in the middle here. And of course, we've got uh, Kiev over there, for example, which is a uh, supply town, uh, supply city. Um, and so we've got, uh, let's say we've got this unit here, for example, which on the Russian turn um, could move its, um, let's see, its snow. So uh, uh, in snow, you can move four um, hexagons. So one, two, three, four, they can't make it to Kiev. So the Germans have still got a little bit of breathing, breathing space there so that uh, if the Russians start um, moving in on Kiev, the uh, Germans would be able to uh, make a move presumably of some kind to uh, stop that from for, to stop Kiev from falling um, back to uh, the uh, Soviets and uh, yeah down down here then at Dnepropetrovsk uh, um, we have uh, the, this uh, surrounded and um, it's going to be they're going to be enjoying the three column shifts against the uh, Germans so okay so what I thought I would do, one second, so we can have the immediate tension of battle, is I thought I would actually roll the dice on camera, <clears throat> and uh, we'll uh, we'll see what we'll see what happens, and we'll see how accurately I can um, uh, resolve the combat. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and do Leningrad up there first, and uh, see what happens. And we got a whopping great two. Okay. So we will remember that we had, um, what was it? It was two to one with three column shifts. Okay. So two to one becomes dum, dum, dum. This, so this is a pretty bad one. Bum, 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 down to one to two. And we rolled a two, which is a counterattack. Okay. So that gives the Russians the option of counterattacking. But as I understand it, the thing is they have to counterattack the entire force that attacked them. So that would mean they'd be attacking at one to three, as far as I can um, see. And that would give the, the Germans a 50% chance of having a counterattack against them. Yeah, it's like, not like the central front there in Leningrad could say, I'm counterattacking and I'm only attacking them. As I understand it, that's, that's not allowed. They have to counterattack everyone. So the Russians are going to choose not to counterattack. Um, so... Yeah, that was a very good result, obviously, for the Soviets, because uh, there was a one in three chance there that um, they would have been forced to retreat out of Leningrad. So we've done that one. We'll pop that one aside uh, over here somewhere. And uh, we can move on down now to the big one, which is uh, Moscow. Well, Len Leningrad was a pretty big one, too. But uh, let's see uh, what happens in Moscow. Of course, here, this is where we're going to commit the Eric von Manstein card. So I'll go ahead and pop that card. Gosh, there's so much live action taking place this time. So exciting. And we'll see what happens in Moscow. Ooh, a whopping rate five. And I think that's good enough, isn't it? Because the card, we doubled the strength of one unit. So that was the seven becomes 14 and the six is 20. That's four to one with three column shifts. Let's just do it again by the numbers. So four to one with three column shifts. So that's one, two, three, takes us down to here. But we rolled five, which is defender retreats. And defender retreat is, let's get it right there. Defender retreats his units two hexes. Attacking units may advance if the target hex is vacated. Notice that that can still happen even in the snow. So uh, let's see here. Uh, so now the defender has to retreat uh two hexes let me sort of sort that out and now i realize i should have paid a bit more attention <clears throat> i'm trying to keep my nose clean i didn't uh go back and change things should have paid a bit more attention to uh which uh battles i was resolving first because um i might have been able to get um i think might have been able to get to a point where um no i don't think so come to think of it now, I was wondering if 
You know, like if the if these chaps here had fought first and had won against them and then could have pushed through here to have stopped the, the southwest front in Moscow having any means to retreat. But um, that's not the case. The the Germans would have had to have been here as far as I can see. So, uh, yeah, because if they were even if they were there, if they had gone like dong dong to here. Um, then the uh, Southwest Front could still have moved up there. Okay, so Southwest Front moved up there. The um, <clears throat> two um, Panzer armies, 2nd Panzer and 3rd Panzer, have moved into Moscow. Um, I'm not being terribly analytical about that. I'm just thinking, well, it's 13 strength points, and I want to hang on to Moscow. I've only got one more move after this, so... Um, they're just parking the uh, panzers in Moscow, as it were. Um, yes, yeah, see, there we go. It's park the panzer time. Right. <clears throat> so that's what's happened there. So then continuing on with the attacks, um, I was thinking, I was thinking I shouldn't do this one next. You know, just going down this line like this. Shouldn't do that one next because that could, well, that would almost certainly re result in my moving these to something like that. And I want them to be there to get in the way of this unit here so that hopefully this unit will not be able to escape. So <clears throat> I'm, they're going to attack them. <clears throat> but before that, these two units are going to attack them. So here we have, um, <clears throat> excuse me, 10 against uh, 3. So that's 3 to 1. Um, the river doesn't count because there's no river here. Uh, but they've got the forest and they've got Soviets in the snow. So they've got two column shifts. So it's three to one with two column shifts. Uh, let's go ahead and roll that up. See what we get. We get three. This is so exciting. Here we go. One, no, from three to one, one, two, three column shifts. No, sorry. It was two column shifts. From three to one, two column shifts, and we rolled a three, which is a counter blow. <coughs> Excuse me. So one second. There we are. I'm new to this, but that was the result. Uh, it goes on to the uh, the phasing pl player. I uh, could have gone there, could have gone here. So it's there. So that means now that if this unit doesn't remove itself from that situation, it will have to attack that unit in uh, the uh, so in the upcoming um, Soviet turn, okay. So now moving on, uh, we have uh, the combat from these chaps here. So we've got nine uh, versus three, but they've got fully three column shifts because they're in a city. Um, they are. Oh yeah, I'm glad I caught myself there. Yeah, the those two, those two there were objective hexes this is not obviously objective hexes are pretty rare this is this is just a city okay so there's actually two column shifts here because of the river no there are three no there's still three of course there are there are three because of the um uh, the the river the city and the snow right so it's three to one with three column shifts so we come over here oh and let's roll the dice first Three to one, three column shifts. Here we go. And we get a three. So three to one, we go one, two, three. We get a three, which is a counter blow once again. So uh, the conventional way to do that, as I understand it, is you grab the, um, whatever it's called, attack marker, and uh, you pop it on the enemy like that. Okay, um, all right, we'll decide what all this means later on. Um, and then we come down, final um, final attack down here. Uh, so let's see, we've got um, eight and three is 11. So we have two to one, and they've got three column shifts by the look of them. They've got a city, they've got a river, and the Soviets defending in snow. So, <clears throat> as we said, it's um, two to one with three column shifts. Let's roll the dice. Oh, there we go. Oh, we got a nice six. So two to one with three column shifts. Two to one. One, two, three column shifts. 
and we finally get one of those defender retreat that uh, we were looking for earlier. And as I understand it, I think I have the procedure for this memorized, good grief, now. Uh, which is to say that, um, not surprisingly, tends to happen in uh, zone of control games. Um, they cannot retreat through enemy zone of control. They're clearly surrounded, okay? So they can't retreat. Um, at this stage of the game of um, no retreat, the Russian units are one-step units. So if he, um, uh, if he loses a step... Uh, he is destroyed. He's not surrendered, as I understand it. So he goes there. Oh, there we go. Right. So that means the point there being that, um, yeah, shattered is better because you get a free return to the game. Um, but here you have to pay a card to uh, get him out of jail, so to speak. Um and so let's see that was um that was defender retreat wasn't it yes uh attacking units may advance if the target hex is vacated which it is so the attacking units may advance let's have a look at that and so that's what happened down there uh the uh 11th army advanced into uh Propetrovsk. And uh, the two infantry armies that were here advanced in also and then continued the one hex onto here. You can do that in the snow weather. What you can't do is have the extra hex again for if there had been armored units here. Uh, so you can you can do this bit, but you can't you, the armor can't move any further. Not that I have any armor there anyway, but there we go. Uh, okay, and then let's see. 